The more choices customers have, the less likely they are to buy. So how do you succeed in a world that's flooded with options? Differentiation. If you want to be successful, you must differentiate your offer. Here's how. Since 2016, I have been in hardcore boot camp of differentiation because we have been working with over 2,000 brands to help them find success on Amazon, which is by and far one of the most competitive places to grow a brand and sell products. Because unlike your own website, you have all of your competitors and they're not just on the search results page, they're also advertising on your product pages. So it is fierce. Competition is at a whole other level and successful businesses must differentiate in a meaningful way in order to be able to stand out, grab clicks, drive sales, and find profitable success. Because here's the thing. If you don't differentiate, one of two things will happen. One, customers will just choose not to buy at all. Or two, they're going to go with the brand that's the cheapest or has the most reviews or some other more arbitrary detail that is not related to the product or the company itself. And so differentiation, strategically positioning yourself to be different, to be unique compared to all of the other choices out there is key, particularly if you don't want to have to compete on just being the cheapest. That is a hamster wheel where you are never going to be able to get out of it because the fact of the matter is, is that there's always somebody who is going to be willing to sell at a cheaper price, even if that means taking a loss until they drive you out of business and then they can set their prices at whatever they want. So how do you differentiate your product in a way that is not just superficial, that is meaningful, that is going to really make customers want to choose you over the other options out there. Because one of the things that I see a lot when people think differentiation, and this is what not to do, is they think, oh, well, I'll just make my product a different color. Or I'll include a free keychain or a sticker or some other kind of arbitrary bonus gift or some other little tweak or statement about something that's the same as all of the other companies out there. It's just that none of the other companies are saying it. That's not differentiation. I mean, it is. It's providing customers an alternative choice. It's just that it's it lacks the depth that's going to really compel people to want to choose your option. And it has to be persuasive if you are asking people to take a chance on a company they've never heard of before or pay a higher price tag than what they would otherwise pay if they chose one of your competitors. You need to go beyond meaningless differences to find something substantial that is going to drive conversions that's going to create fans and that is going to allow you to build a brand and a business that has growth in its future. So you need to do a few things. One, you need to be clear about who you are competing against. Now, when I talk about serving your competition, I am not suggesting that you keep an obsessive focus on who you are competing against. However, you do need to be able to create contrast of how you compare versus your competitors. And you are only able to do that if you understand who your competitors are. Contrast is an essential element for really everything in this world. And it's also essential when it comes to differentiation because truly that's what differentiation is. It is contrast. It is 
saying, here's one thing and here are all of the things that are unique about this other thing. And so we need to be very clear about what that competitive landscape looks like, how we fit into it, and what makes us unique so that as we are thinking about all of the other elements and the ways that we're going to show up and communicate and the design that we're going to create and the imagery and and what platforms we're going to be marketing on and all this, that, and the other, it all starts with understanding your place in the current environment and also to be aware enough of how that environment might change over time. For example, athleisure went through a big shift when we entered the pandemic and suddenly everybody was spending all of their time at home and realizing why would I put on tight fitting blue jeans and all of this uncomfortable, restrictive office wear when I can sit and work in loungewear. And so the athleisure environment changed immensely during that time. There were way more entrants into the landscape. Brands that had never really been in that category started entering into it. And that shaped how businesses needed to position themselves if they were going to continue to drive sales. So that's just one example. Another example is not all that long ago, five, 10 years ago, very few people knew about the keto diet. Instead, the hot diet was the paleo diet. And Sometimes the paleo diet might be low carb, but not always. Whereas obviously, well, not obviously, if you're not familiar, ketogenic diet is very low carbohydrate in order to follow it to the T. And so if you had a product that was for people that were wanting to follow the ketogenic diet, you might be operating in a very different kind of competitive landscape where most of your competitors were more in the paleo, low-carb, zone diet, no, South Beach, South Beach diet, those types of areas because you didn't necessarily have a lot of direct competitors within your own category. Whereas now today, the keto diet is very popular. And so there have been a lot more competitors that you are now needing to position yourself against. So that's also something very important to keep in mind when it comes to differentiation is what made you different in the past may need to be reinforced or shifted in the future depending upon what happens in your environment. However, there are two things that you can do to minimize the likelihood of needing to create a completely whole new strategy. And the first of those is know who you're selling to. So you must have crystal clear understanding of who your customers are. I feel like I can never stress this enough because it is really one of the keys to being able to do any marketing effort effectively. It affects your keyword research. It affects the colors you choose. It affects the pictures you use. It affects the vocabulary you pull from. It affects the references. It affects everything or it should affect everything. And so you have to have a lot of clarity about who your customers are so that you can know how to speak to them and you can understand what they care about. And this may help to drive some of those differentiation decisions. Now, the third piece is you have to have a crystal clear idea of who your brand identity is, and you have to really commit to being bold with that. So what do I mean? Let's think about liquid death or Apple computers, or even one of my favorite examples in this category is Black Rifle Coffee Company. Each one of these brands has immense clarity, not only about who they are as a business, but who they're not. They also understand their customers and they understand the field that they're competing in. And when they put all of those ingredients together, they're able to communicate in a way where their message spreads and where people 
are oftentimes all of, I think all of those examples that I gave are examples of businesses that are by no means the cheapest option out there. They are actually commanding a more premium price tag and they're able to do that because they have figured out this differentiation piece so effectively. If you are simply copying what your competitors are doing, that is one of the easiest, quickest ways to fall into obscurity. I actually just saw a friend of mine shared on Instagram a little image quote that I think was something along the lines of, the second page on Google is my dark web. (laughs) Essentially, like all the creepy, weird unknowns are those pages that that are not on the first page of a search result. And I think a lot of people feel that way. Most people are not going to click to the next page. So you have to be front and center. And we're not just talking about in the search results. We're talking about wherever it is that your customers exist. And if you are going to be entering an arena where you already have a lot of competitors, if you are simply doing what everybody else is doing, Why would any customer choose you? So you need to get really honest with yourself and you really need to think, am I truly differentiating myself or am I merely making some small tweaks? But if I look at it with just full on transparency and honesty, I know that I am not taking some of those bolder choices and those creative risks that would allow me to be able to create that necessary contrast that we talked about. When you are able to nail all these three points, so just to recap, that is understanding who you're competing against and how to create that contrast, understanding who your customers are and figuring out how to speak to them in a meaningful way, And then understanding who you are as a business and committing to being really bold and embodying your brand identity, then you begin to see the path forward. You begin to identify gaps where you can create that contrast, where you can give people a reason to choose. And when you do this really well, you also do something incredibly exciting, which is in many ways, you create your own product category. So let's look at Apple computers. There's Apple and then there's PC, but PC isn't one single brand. PC is Dell, HP, Toshiba, Acer, probably a a host of other computer companies that all fall into that PC category. And then Apple is off here on their own in a universe of their own, which they have created. They have intentionally created products that are not compatible or as easily compatible with the rest of the category. They have created a closed system. They have established a very clear boundary between them and us. They charge more money than the alternative but they understand who their customers are. They understand that their customers care about beautiful aesthetics and ease of use, and that they even take some pride in embodying the Apple identity and user and making it their own. They they created their own category within the category of personal computers and phones, and I mean, obviously now they have a lot of other products as well. Another example, Black Rifle Coffee Company. They are a veteran-owned coffee company. So they are not just competing against any and every coffee company that they're out that is out there. They are aligning around a set of shared values and identity that there is going to resonate with their customers and makes them a singular choice that it is veteran-owned coffee coffee company. You have Liquid Death. Liquid Death is not like any other water company out there. Every other water company, all of their messaging is about how sustaining 
water is, how it's an essential ingredient for all of life, how, you know, it's very natural, it's gentle, it's unobtrusive, it's, it's pure. Liquid death, they went in the opposite direction. Instead of life-sustaining death to plastic, all of this bold, aggressive marketing that I'm certain is off-putting to a lot of people, but that's exactly the point, to be provocative, to push boundaries, and to create a category of their own. They are unlike any other water out there, but liquid death in particular is interesting because they also now are starting to have copycats. And so that's where I was saying, when you are clear about who your customers are and who you are, then that gives you a point of differentiation that is more meaningful beyond just that contrast of us versus them. Because that's going to be less compelling if you have copycats that are coming in and taking a very different strategy, but don't have that same depth of conviction in who they are and understanding and connection with who their customers are. So I cannot understate how important it is to really do the homework in all three of these categories and to be continuing to dig into that and think about it and strategize around these points so that you're not just creating a strategic positioning strategy for right now, but that that is able to evolve over time, whether the dynamics of culture change or your competitive landscape changes because you are doing such an incredible job. Because at the end of the day, your competitors can't copy who you are. They can't replicate that exact same relationship that you have with your customers. And that is why those elements are so profoundly important. It's uniquely yours. It's also why you need to get a lot of clarity and understanding, not just how to serve a particular set of interests, but really, a group of people that have a shared set of beliefs and ideas and interests and concerns. And I put together a video that talks about how to do exactly that. And you should be able to click on it right here, but I highly suggest you watch that because it is really going to take this whole conversation to the next level. So I'll see you over there in that next video. And until then, bye.